I want to talk about life of faith in the kingdom. Our life of faith in the kingdom. If you ask somebody, I don't know how many of you have seen, I've seen many people, they are in the kingdom means, they are a Christian, they come to church, but their life in the Lord is that not victorious. You know, it's not about you come to church, you worship the Lord, you're a part of a ministry, everything is happening, but the joy is not there. They're there, but not there. So that life is something that we are going to look into. I'm going to touch upon that. Why? Or what is it that is going to empower us to have a victorious Christian life? We are going to look into the details of that. And today's uh, preaching is going to be based on a very famous sermon, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. I'm going to read it from NKJV. Then we are going to read it in another version. Now... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you read the chapter 10, or the writer of the Hebrews is encouraging uh, on the sacrifice, the importance of being steadfast in persecution, and when he ended writing chapter 10, he is saying, you need to live a life of faith. The just shall live by faith. He is encouraging the people. And in the 11th chapter, he is talking about faith. You know, the root Hebrew word is actually meaning, this faith is not just a belief in a truth, but it is the very truth we based our life upon. It is, it, is, it is a verb, it is an action word. So what we believe in, and we are going to live based on that belief. So now, I'm going to read it, let's read it in Amplified. Sonia, can we have it in Amplified, please? It's so amazing, when you read it in Amplified, it opens up your eyes and you will, you will be amazed now, faith is the assurance, title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Faith is the assurance. Here, faith is... A title deed, we all know what is a title deed. A title deed is a legal document that is your right to claim what you have. You know, in Dubai, we, we hear, a, hear this word a lot, a title deed. That means when I have a title deed, what I'm saying is I have all the right legally to claim it. It is mine. It is mine. So he's saying the assurance is like a title deed. Assurance is like a legal right that I have for what? Things hoped for. What is that? Divinely guaranteed. We are not going to have the claim, the legal claim over something physical. But we have that guarantee. We have that right in the kingdom of God to claim what we hope for, which is not physical, but divinely guaranteed. The promises of God, the word of God, the word you hear, the word you read, the promises you received. And I have the legal right in the kingdom to claim those promises I received and the evidence of things not seen. That means what I don't see, I am going to physically see that in reality. See, when you understand what is faith, it's just not a belief in a truth. It is a faith. It is our belief in the divine truth that I have that legal right to claim the divinely given word, the promises to me, and I am going to see that physically manifest in my life. Hallelujah. And my life is going to be based upon this truth. My life is based upon this truth. 
the writer of Hebrew is encouraging the believers at that time. He's saying, you're going through persecution, but believe that the promise that you are going to be in heaven, we are going through persecution here, we are going through tough times here, but the writer is encouraging the believers that you are going to see him one day. You are going to be in heaven one day. So you go through it with this faith because it is divinely guaranteed. It is given to you in the spirit. But how many of us are living a life of this assurance with this guarantee and living a life of joy and freedom? This is faith. But it is so interesting you know, when we talk about this faith, Bible says, by faith, you become a born again, child of God, right? Bible says in Romans chapter, chapter 10, verse 9 and 8, you believe and you confess with your mouth, you are saved. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, you believe and you become a child of God. So your faith is the foundation of your Christian life. That is one side of it. But Bible is also talking about an active faith. On the basis of the promises, on the basis of this, we are going to live a life of joy, a life of faith. Let's read uh, verse 6 from the same chapter. But in NKJV, please. But without faith, it is impossible. Uh, in NKJV, please. It is impossible, without, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, let's look at the parte, the first part of the scripture. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. See, by believing in Jesus' crucifixion, the sacrifice, we already pleased him. We become the children of God. But what the Bible is talking about here, without faith, you cannot please him. That means if I have faith, I please my God. If I don't have faith, I don't please. But if I have faith, I please God. As we looked into my faith upon the divine promises of God, that I have the assurance that I'm going to see in the physical reality of my life, I Please, my God. So now the question is, yes, my faith, because of my faith, I got saved. Because of my faith, I am justified. I made righteous. But again, the same faith, that active faith is going to give me or it is going to please my God. How many of you want to have a life that is pleasing to God? But now, how many of you have? Or if you ask that question to yourself, am I having a life pleasing to God? So here that pleasing is coming back to your faith. That is the importance of this word, the faith. You know, when you talk about it, all this chapter, I know Hebrews chapter 11 is the, uh, the, the heroes of faith. So many names have mentioned there. And I want to read, I'm not going to read the name I'm going to read what they've achieved. So I want you to understand, it is not talking about the eternal life alone, but it is talking about our life on earth. I'm going to read from verse 33 onwards. The same chapter, verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, Next verse. Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead race to life again. I'm talking about this faith in our life. You know, we talk about subdued the kingdom, quenched the fire. Attacked or conquer the army. It is talking about our life on earth. You take that into your life. And all the struggle that you go through. Bible is saying if you have faith. 
and you're going to please God. And the faith that is talking about, a faith that is going to conquer the challenges that you and I face on this earth. Hallelujah. When we go through the challenges of life, you know, generally we see many kinds, but I really want to focus on two kinds of people here. The one is people who attempted, failed and turned away from God. It is not that they turned away from God and they went into the world. People who attempted something for God, but they ended up as a failure. They think that they are a failure, but they actually gone back from the very track that God wanted them to pursue. You know, let's look at the life of Moses. We know that Moses grew up in the palace of Egypt. Moses grew up as a prince there. But when he realized that as people are going through the slavery there, he wanted to go out and help. We all know the story. One day he went out and he saw two of his countrymen were fighting. He intervened and, he, and the other person... He intervened and one person got killed. The very next day he went again and one of his countrymen is saying, are you going to kill me like you killed that person again? He got scared. And he ran away from Egypt. And he went and stayed in a far off place. 40 years gone by. What he wanted to do, he wanted to save a countryman. Was it right? Of course that was right. I believe that he might have heard the stories from his parents that what God spoke to Joseph at that time, these people are going to be in Egypt for many years and there is going to be a deliverance. And he wanted to attempt that plan of God in his life, but he failed. But when he failed, he went back or he, he, he ran away from the very place he wanted to do something for God. But God did not leave him. After 40 years, God found him. And he said, what you wanted to do 40 years back, I want you to do the same. But not one person this time, the entire nation. That's what our God wants to do in our life. And when we attempted many things. Now if you look at our lives, in faith we heard God. Remember the first verse. The divinely given promises of God in our life. Bring it into your life. When you have that promises, you have that faith, you attempt something in your life and you failed. But many a times what we do, we withdraw. We go back into our shell. We don't want to do it again. We don't want to go back to that place again. We don't want to do that thing in the office. We don't want to pray that prayer again. We don't want to preach that sermon again. We don't want to do that thing again. But here, what is happening is God is saying the same thing what you thought is a failure. I want you to come back and do that again. You know, when we go through such things in our life, the failures can actually take you away. You think that is taking away from the plan of God in your life. But actually, God is wanting you to learn to trust Him even in the failure. They don't have, if you see, people are there. Everyone goes through that. I've gone through that. Everyone experiences failure in life. But when you go through that failure, when you go back into that place where you think, you know what? I don't want to do it again in my life. Not anymore. I don't want to do it. I will never attempt that. That was the experience I got back from that person. Or from that church. Or from that family. Or from that employer. Or from that manager. We have it in our life. You did it with a good intention. You did it because you heard from God. You prayed because you heard it. You are so sure about it. But that did not work. I'm telling you. As God went back and called Moses back. God is calling many back into that plan of God. He brought him back into the same nation where he did not want to stay. He wanted to stay away from that nation. He was scared. But he wanted to do the things of God. You know. 
the life of faith in Moses' life you just compare? A man who grew up in the palace, wise man, grew up with all the knowledge and the luxuries, but living out there as a shepherd, where he wanted to be, where we were supposed to be, but where he ended up. But if any, and we see many in the kingdom of God like this, they need to be in a place, but they actually think they, are, they don't belong there, but they are going to be in a different place. God is calling you out from that place today. I am sure God is calling and speaking into your life that God is going to bring you back into that track, into that plan, into the very place you thought it is no more for you. Your faith is going to please Him. You're reestablishing or you're restoring that faith in your life and that is going to make you a weapon in the kingdom of God. As we read in that subdued kingdoms, quench the fire. They were valiant. Through faith, they did it. And through faith, you and I can do the same. You and I can do the same because he has promised us and we are going to live a life of victory. You know, a lot of things to learn from the life. And another category, if you really look at it, they say many struggle in their life of faith. Have you ever struggled in your Christian life to believe something, to get something, to pray and get over something? I did. You know, this is what we really need to understand. When we look at or when we experience that struggle in our life, we kind of say that, Lord, I don't have the strength anymore. But what is going to happen when repeatedly challenges are coming into my life? One after the other. One comes, I pray, I get a breakthrough, then I get into the other one. I come out of a storm, then another storm comes. You know, I'm tired of this. There's no joy in the life, in the kingdom. But Bible is talking about victorious life, joy, even in the midst of the fire. They're standing and worshipping and we see some people do that. We think, how are they doing it? But it's so tough. You know, face the fact and it, it is not only about the victorious, but our, that valley time, the valley period is also something that we need to learn. And people are going through that. But the good news is God knows. And he talked about it. He, he, he explained things in the word and we are learning from them. You know, a husband and wife from the Bible, Abraham and Sarah. It is so wonderful to learn from their life. Abraham was a, the father of nations, the father of faith. You know, when Paul is teaching in Romans, he's teaching about justification by faith. He is talking in detail about Abraham, how he was justified only because of his faith. He was a man, the life of faith, and his name is also mentioned there. Abraham, he went from one place, you know, his father's place was Ur, then from there to Haran, and he moved from there to uh, Bethsheba, from there to uh, Bethel. You know, he started moving. When you read the life story of Abraham, few pages 25 or, or more than that, because that 25 years, many things are mentioned in the Bible. But those few pages, if you really meditate, if you take as episodes, it has a lot to learn from it. It was not easy to travel from one place to another, you know, uh, take everything, entire thing and move to a new country. A new place, a new culture, new, new, new uh, uh, food, have, everything is new there. He did that. His journey of faith, he heard God. The promise was, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And in you, I'm going to bless all the families on the earth. That was a promise. But when he moved out of that place, he had no clue how this thing is going to be. You know, when we start our Christian life, I don't know how many of you understood everything here or from the Bible. I did not. Even when we read, even when you go through a situation, you have no clue how things are. But the same way he just obeyed what he heard. 
He obeyed the voice of God. He obeyed and he went from one nation to another nation. See, think about it. He finally met God in, in Canaan and he said, I'm going to give you the place. Then he went a little far and pitched his tent there. There was a famine. He went to another nation, to Egypt. Think about it, the journey. He said, my wife is, is my sister. And in all those episodes, it is coming. How was he facing these challenges? It was not easy for him to believe what God said and to live a life pleasing to God. There was no setback for 25 years. He moved to places. There was issues. His nephew left and he took the good portion. But God comes down and again telling him what I am going to give you. Then he fought a war and God gave him victory. Then God said, I am going to be your reward. Then he said, God, you spoke to me something, but I don't see anything coming out of that. He looked at his physical realities and he could not believe that something good can happen in his life. You know, when we look around in our life, you know why we struggle? We look around our life. And we see the realities which is contrary to what we believe or what God spoke. When you have that realities hitting you and we know that, you know, let's face the fact. How can I believe it? This is a thing. My job is not coming. Visa is not getting renewed. Money is not coming. That is a reality. But the word of God says, God speaks to you something that I'm going to take care of you. The door is going to be opened. So how are you believing it? That struggle is what I'm talking about. You know, after the war, uh, he, he won the war and Abraham said, I don't want anything to you. I, I don't want anything from you, king. And immediately God comes down and said, Abraham, I am your reward. Then he's asking, Lord, how is it possible? Where is the son? I am going to. He established his covenant with Abraham once again. And God fulfilled that promise. He got Isaac. Again the challenge is good. God asked him to sacrifice it. You know what? One after the another. I won. I came out of the storm. The another one come. See the struggle is real. But what is more real in our life is the God who promised. And when we have that faith and we continue. That's a life pleasing to God. You know, only way we can please God is, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm justified, I'm, I'm, I'm born again, I have all the spiritual blessing, but here is where the real test is. Are you still struggling with prayer? Are you still struggling with handling your relationship or difficult to forgive somebody? Or you're still struggling in the past with the past, you're not able to come out, the pain, the hurt that you go through? That's what the struggle I am talking about. This is what is holding you back. The life of faith in the kingdom. If you don't believe 100%. We will look at how we come out of it. From the life of Abraham. Sarah, his wife. It is so interesting, right? Uh, Abraham. Sorry. Sarah followed Abraham, she went along with him, one place to another, as an obedient wife, obedient partner. And I wonder when he wanted to go from Israel, Canaan, to Egypt, he told her something. Sarah, tell that you are my sister. You know, and when we read, we say, the king, the pharaoh calls Abraham back and why did this, why did you do this to me? Why did you lie to me? But there was nothing clearly mentioned what happened in between. I was thinking, what must have happened there? How could Pharaoh find out that, you know what, something is with this lady here in the palace? Something he understood, he got worried, he got panicked that which is happening in my house and it's because of this lady. I believe something happened there and that did not touch Sarah. You know, when... She was going through that tough time. Imagine, she believed her husband, went from left a place 
and she went to another place but now she is in a foreign land in a foreign palace and he lied or he along with his husband he lied and he's he's imagine her mind what was going through it but god protected sarah in that situation and safely brought her out and gave back to abraham the promises of god not only come to give you a life which is not in the future the promises of god nurtures you the promises of god protects you throughout your journey so when she joined back again she thought she also looked at her physical condition i am old i'm not going to conceive i don't think i'm going to have a child but abraham yes and she gave hagar to abraham you know see many a times what we also come into that situation maybe the promise word that is not for me maybe that is for my husband even that's for my wife or not for me for my children of my friend and we tend to give up on our journey of faith because we don't see something is happening in our lives but again she looked at her physical conditions but how she received that promise in her life is what god is going to teach us let's read romans chapter 4 verse 18 eighteen to 21 sonia okay now who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of sarah's womb see when paul is writing to the believers in rome he is talking how he continued to believe what was promised when you read this we understand it was not easy did not and not being weak in faith there are chances that your faith can get weakened your situations people around circumstances can bring in to hit you that your faith can get weakened but what did he do he did not consider his own body already dead in abraham's case he was old there was no way he is going to have a child that was the mind that was his mind but the promise was i am going to bless you but the faith actually you look at the physical reality you look at your situation you look at your job conditions you look at your financial situation you look at your marriage you look at your family your children you say you tend to say your mind will work probably you don't speak it out but actually in your mind you say how is it going to happen that's where he's saying since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of sarah's womb and he, he looked at sarah he thought the same next was uh 20th was he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief he did not what i understand what we need to understand he did not waver in his mind when situations come when the physical reality is telling you it's not going to happen what god spoke is not going to happen what you believe is not going to happen the door that is shut is not going to open you will not have what you believe for you will not have what you've been praying for the struggle in your mind is hitting you when he is saying he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief the promises of god is divinely given to you and it is your assurance then what did he do but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god he was strengthened in faith 
giving glory to God. So when you give glory of you don't see, even though you don't see what you are wishing, what you are desiring, what you are praying for, but you start giving glory to God, that is going to strengthen your faith. Weakening things, the storm things around will continue to come. But you give glory to God. You give glory to God. And that is going to strengthen your faith. Hallelujah. Next verse. And being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. This is what we need to talk to ourselves. What I don't have, I know the situations around me, the circumstances around me is not going to give me a hope. But I am fully convinced. You know, I am fully convinced. I talk to myself. I tell myself that my God is going to fulfill what he promised to me. So when you face that wall in front of you, when you face that struggling phase in your life, you need to talk to yourself. You need to have the conviction in you. The God who promised is going to fulfill that promise into my life. The God who promised is going to give that into your life. He is going to open that door to you. He is going to bring you back into the plan of God. You don't need to sit there as a failure. You don't need to go back and say that I am not not worthy to do that. I'm not worthy to do something for God. I'm not worthy to be that husband or a wife or a child. You need to believe. You need to speak it out. You need to talk to yourself and say, the one who promised is able to fulfill what he promised and I am going to see a fulfillment of it. Amen. That is faith according to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Evidence of things not seen. I have the evidence. I don't see it, but I have the evidence. I'm going to see it in the reality. When it comes to sickness, you know we were healed. Women get their dead back to life. That is on earth. That is on earth. Yes, I talked about eternal life. That is faith. But this faith, active faith, our faith is going to please God. Is My faith is going to bring the health back to me. My faith is going to bring that job back to me. The faith is going to put me back into that ministry. The faith is going to fix my marriage. That's what you need to talk. Even when your partner is not seemingly working along, but you talk to them, you talk to God and talk to yourself. No, I'm going to see this is going to happen. Hallelujah. Don't get weakened by the situations around. But you need to be convinced enough to speak to yourself and also speak to the situations and people around that I'm going to see a miracle. Hallelujah. That was Abraham. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, 11 to verse talking about how Sarah received the promise. Can I, can I have that scripture? Hebrews 11, 11. Yeah. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past the age because she just him faithful who had promised. See, imagine, Sarah has gone through a lot of shame, a lot of rejection, a lot of trouble. And after this, at this age, by faith, Sarah herself also received a strength to conceive. The dead womb became alive when she believed and when she talked to herself that yes, the promised child is going to be from my womb. When I speak that word into my life, when I speak that into my situation, you know what is happening? You are strengthening yourself. You are speaking to yourself and that is going to bring you to a place to receive the fulfillment of the promise. That's what it said. Received strength to conceive a seed and she bore a child. 
you know it is the physical reality of the miracle will happen when you receive first in the spiritual when you receive that seed in the spiritual that is going to bring a result in the physical by faith you know that assurance i have the legal right to claim the promises of god you know what god spoke to you in your struggling situation what did god speak to you if you have not seen it for a year 5 10 15 but still you can have that promise you know why the one who promised is our god and he is not a man to change his word his words are eternal he is same yesterday today and forever so based on what he has spoken is how i am going to believe i am going to speak and i am going to come out of it hallelujah you know when you face i i i in the life one of the episodes in the life of abram it always fascinates me and it is very tough to do also you know when lot and abraham were so blessed they had enough of thing abraham said you know what we cannot live in this land we cannot live in this land what we are going to do is we are going to part ways then he said lot you choose where you want to go if you go to the left i go to the right if you go to the right i go to the left and i was wondering abraham was called abraham was blessed and the, he was the beneficiary of abraham's blessings but still abraham is giving the right to lot to choose i'm thinking we all will go and fight for our right you know what the promises of god and everything is there but in the struggling time in the, there was not a fight actually it was a good parting ways but in the good parting ways also we what do we do we take our right to choose but he is letting go but even then god is coming and saying you know what lot chose best what he saw in his eyes in the natural realm but god says abraham look up you see whatever you see i'm going to give it to you i believe that is including the part where lot was going it is not about letting go of your right even when you face a struggle god is going to come down and empower you to receive what he has already promised you're actually not losing anything when you let go when you actually let go you are bringing god into the equation when you say i have the right to choose you are saying okay fine you take the right to choose but you are actually saying lord you know what i know how to handle but when you say lord i let others choose god is going to come down and say you know what i'm going to be with you it's the same he won the battle the king said you know what you take everything i need them he said no i don't need anything from you he did not take anything from the king at the same time bible is saying god come down and he told abraham abraham i am your reward you don't need to get anything from others you know i am your reward my presence is your reward when i am with you i am going to fulfill the promises of god what were those situations that you are going through you know struggling it's not easy it is difficult but the god in us the holy spirit in us the word that we have the promise that we carry is going to break everything in front of us and is going to open that way for us hallelujah you know what tinsi and eldo can you please stand up you can look that couple you know eldo and tinsi they moved please be seated they moved from india bangalore india 7 months back both of them were having good jobs they resigned they felt in their spirit they felt in their heart to move to ua they came down to ua and uh, they were based they are based out of currently they are based out of alain they heard from somebody that see fan and they wanted to come to pastrini's church somebody called me and said hey there's a couple from bangalore they are in alain they want to come to see fan do you have an online or any church in alain you know i tried to look for some church i gave but they said no we want to come here they started coming to see fan from alain you know how many hours they spent a day traveling to come to a church 5 hours 
they don't drive bus one side is 2 hours from bodubai they come here minimum 5 hour, 5 hours and the money they used to come from a line to dubai believing that one day god would give them a job in dubai so that they can be a part of this church part of many ministry and we can grow in the kingdom and i was wondering wow this is good even when we ask people to come early sometimes people who live in bodubai karama nearby places but they come every week 5 hours traveling in a bus and months after months praise god for that but they face challenges you ask them they both of them you know eldo hardly got couple of interviews but tinsi got many interviews she's an auditor and he's an it professional and she got many interviews past the third round and waiting for the offer letter you know sometimes almost got the offer letter it was not getting it was not easy for them finance travel job is not having questions from india oh did you guys leave why and all these things but last week she got an offer she got an offer from dubai she got an offer from an mnc <laughs> testimony is not the job they went through the struggles but you know what they did during the struggle they started looking for apartments in dubai believing that they are going to move from alain to dubai and they are going to be a part of cfan to build the kingdom so you know that is faith they believed that god is going to provide to us week after week they spend money you know even one week when we wanted to give for the uh, vehicle in tanzania they did not come one week you know what they wanted to give that money to the uh, tanzania thing they they were watching us online the commitment god watches you know during the struggle there are issues but in that you stay back you talk to yourself you know there are times they were really down they went through that difficult phase but yesterday or last few days back when she got the off the letter and the manager called and said tinsi what you asked i'm going to make your day today what you asked i'm going to give you double of that a life of faith in the kingdom are you living as a failure are you still struggling yeah there are but again as we read in romans 4:18 he was convinced that one who promised is going to give it he strengthened sarah did the same thing but how can i get strength that's a question right we we do it let's read um hebrews 11 verse 6 again please But without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him he was he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him you know we heard from pastor what is diligence those who passionately seek him you know seeking is something that we search investing our time seeking is not just i go find and i take it seeking is something that i am decided and i am ready and i will go and i will spend my time and i'm going to get it seeking him including your daily bible reading because you love god seeking is including like they came from a line here and be a part of the church seeking is including lord i'm going through this and i want someone to speak to me speaking is something that you are coming after the church and being prayed over by people because they're going to speak into your life they're going to pray over your life that is diligently seeking many a times like moses we went back we sulk and we go that way and say you know what lord i don't want anything with anybody but what god is saying that diligent seeker a man or a woman of faith to have a life of faith will definitely diligently seek him that's what in matthew 6:33 say seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness all these things shall be added unto you that is also including a seeking 
the faith that we have that one day we will see him face to face the faith that we have the promises that we have through that we are going to overcome the challenges and problems and struggles that's how we are going to overcome it hallelujah how we said diligently we seek him you know i was i was meditating on the life of abraham and i was reading through it in genesis chapter 28 the time when isaac blessed jacob and sent him off okay go from ezo is going to kill you he was there was a scene that he is blessing jacob when he was praying and blessing he was using the exact same promises what god spoke to abraham he was using the same promise that abraham received from god abraham received it he passed it on to isaac and that became isaac's prayer what you hear from god if that becomes a voice if that becomes a revelation if that becomes your prayer proclamation you are going to have the receiving or you're going to receive the promises of god in your life and i love pastor says linger long enough with the word so that the word becomes a voice in your life hallelujah you know when i read that i suddenly remembered that Isaac spoke the very words God spoke to Abraham. What am I speaking? Romans 4:18 Bible is saying Abraham strengthened by giving glory and he received strength. Sarah by believing received strength. Tony by believing received strength. How diligently seeking his presence day after day the word that is going to come day after day the word that you receive today day after week after week the time that you spend in the worship day after day the word that you hear will become that voice the word that you received will become the prayer the word that you received will become the voice the word that you received will become your proclamation the word that you received will become your conversation you will be around people who speak the same language you will not be like moses who is in the desert you will be like people like paul even in the midst of unbelievers paul is saying at the 14th night in the shipwreck he's saying the angel of god whom i serve came and told me this you know even in the darkest days of paul he had that seeking in the ship no one else heard anything from god maybe gentiles but he had all the reasons not to pray or seeking i believe he had a vision telling that you're not going to perish and that became his voice to the people around don't worry nothing will happen nothing will happen to our life when you seek him diligently diligently when you spend your time in the presence of god what comes will become your voice what comes will become your prayer what comes will become your conversation that's how you overcome the struggles the failures a life of faith in the kingdom is a joyful life you and i need to have it you and i are worthy to have it struggles are there everywhere there are solutions in the kingdom seek him seek help from people come for prayer call us we'll help you we'll support you we'll stand with you we'll pray with you that's how don't be but god will definitely even when moses was away god found him brought him back praise god for those burning bush experiences but also be with people who can speak into your life hallelujah Can you stand up on our feet please? Shut up. Hallelujah. Today If any of you feel in your heart that you know what I'm done. This life of faith, this promise, this this doing things for God or coming up in life or a Or you promise me that I will be a blessing in the company or I will 
prosper or I'll get healed. But I don't see anything, Lord. People who are going through treatments and I believe, but I don't see anything supernatural. That's a struggle. But the truth is, he is watching you. When Abraham let go of his right, he was watching him. When Abraham said to the blessing from a heathen, God watched him. When Paul was in the shipwreck and everyone else were not eating and panicking, God saw him. God is seeing you. He knows your failures. He knows where you're struggling and why you're struggling. Seek him diligently. In his presence, deliverance is there. Peace, he will restore you back into the plan of God. The devil is disarmed and defeated. He is under our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. The one who is in us is greater than that is in the world. Oh, that's a promise. That's what we believe. And with this faith and with what we carry, we are going to subdue kingdoms. We are going to quench the fire. We are going to become mighty warriors. We are going to overcome the struggle, the temptation, the issue, the hurt in the past. We are going to stand in faith for our marriage. We are going to stand in faith for our kids. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You said, yes, and I believe. You said, and it is done. You said, and I believe, yes, I believe. You said, it is. Sing it together, church, if you believe it. You said, I believe, you said, it is done, it is done, you said, you said, I believe, I believe, yes, I believe, you said, sing it again, it is done. Yeah.
believe because he said you say it is done it is done we don't see it but it will be done you say just because you said and because I believe you say it will be done it is done it is done sing it again declare it you say the joy because you think you failed somewhere I'm going to pray it's a time between you and God it's it's only between you and God he sees you he sees you in the storm he sees you when you gone away or far away from God but you think you are away but he is very close to you He is so close to you. A just a word, Lord, that I'm here. I need help. That's what is going to happen today. Your life is going to change. Your life of faith is going to be joyful. Your life of faith is going to be victorious. Your life of faith is going to change many lives. Your life of faith is going to change nations if you believe. Hallelujah. Now many years back I was also sitting through the Bible study and I heard the teaching that God will use you in nations and I believed. Physically I was not able, I was not capable, I did not have what it takes but I believed. and i always say lord use me i will i will i will be used in the nations but when i stand here i know that he can do that hallelujah if god can put me here and speaking to you a person you thought many years back not i'm not able to talk to two people at the same time god can do that in your life hallelujah it is what you believed and what you speak into your life let's pray lord i pray that anybody who thinks that that person failed you or failed in the plan of god or failed in life and gone far away is there in the kingdom is there in the church but lord distanced from you i pray that this is a day that you are going to have or that person is going to have a burning bush experience that is going to put that person back into the very plan of god not one person lord her nation not what that person thinks but 
much beyond what that person can imagine. Lord, if anyone is struggling here in believing, I pray that they're going to gain that strength like Paul gained in that night after 14 days with no stars, no sun. God spoke and God is going to speak to you. And this is what is going to take you out from the water and put you in an island. Wherever you are, the uncertain uncertainty in your life is going to turn into a certainty. You're going to see, son. You're going to see, people. You're going to see favor in your life. Oh, hallelujah. You know the life of not knowing where you're going and you don't know where you're going but God is going to change that situation into a place that you know where you're going you know I'm going to reach the shore you are going to be favored hallelujah like in the island of Malta the islanders showed favor to them and I pray Lord the many are going to receive such a favor in an unfavorable places Strengthen them, Lord. Pray for miracles. Thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah.